From across the multiverse, the legends have assembled. Introducing a new expansion of over 300 cards exploring Dominia's heroes. Johan, Gabriel Angelfire, Sifitri Skazam, Hundin, and many more. Beware the Red Magician with her hordes of kobolds, and the Necromancer who dares to unleash the horror of horrors on the world. In the company of mythic figures, you'll discover new spells and potent artifacts, creatures with the venom of killer bees, and sorcery with the power to defy death. Share in the struggle of heroes and embrace the possibilities which legends bring to life. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you've just seen the introduction, you probably know what kind of cards you can expect in today's mail day. Um, they are legendary creatures from the set Legends, the very first uh, legendary creatures. And I thought, you know, after unpacking this, I thought maybe it's nice to talk a little bit about these legendary creatures and like where did they come from what was the idea behind them and how are they actually closely connected to dungeon and dragons campaigns because there's a brand new set out apparently from uh, hasbro uh, that's all about dnd &D and magic the gathering but the truth is dnd &D and magic the gathering have always been connected and i think legends was the set that made the connection the most clear but before that it was already connected anyway i'm gonna <laughs> Talk about that and more uh, in today's episode. But first, let's open up the goodies. So I've got something here from Card Advantage Europe. I need scissors, actually. Where do I? Okay, here we go. Scissors. Because I've just got some brand new legends. And uh, maybe it's nice to know there are 55 legendary creatures in legends, in the set legends in total. And um, five of those are, of course, the Elder Dragons that you see here at the back. As you can see, there are only three Elder Dragons. Unfortunately, I don't have the other two. Well, I have the Chronicle version of them, but not the other ones. Ooh, I don't want to damage the card. Let's see, let's take it out. Okay. Wow, look at the condition. Oh, that's sweet. Usually, I don't get cards in this condition. Let's see, what is it? Ah, it's Yoham. Beautiful. So Johan, a summon legend, and the set Legends was the first to have the creature type of Legends as well. And all the Legends were golden cards. Again, uh, this set was the first to actually have gold cards in the set. Now, the cool thing is that the idea behind these creatures was that the creators of the game wanted to come up with kind of heroes in the game of Magic, just like they had heroes in their D&D campaign. So here is that connection again between Dungeons and Dragons and Legends because the creators of Legends, Steve and Robin, were avid uh, Dungeon and Dragons players, and a lot of creatures, for example, Evil Eye of Orms by Gore, came from their Dungeon and Dragons campaigns. And it is said that the legendary creatures were actually the heroes in their campaigns. And uh, as you can see, there are uh, three colors. Well, Johan is three colors. Uh, other legendary creatures can be two colors or three colors, but they're all multiple colors. And in this case, it's the allied colors of green, right? And allied colors, maybe it's nice if you don't know, you can always find it by looking at the color, in this case, green, and the colors right next to it. So white is an allied color and red is an allied color. The colors that are opposite to it, so further away, or the enemy colors. So blue and black for the color green in this case. Cool, right? So Johan, wow, really nice. Let's see if I can get the sleeve out of here. Yes, I can. Let's keep it in the sleeve because it's such good, <clears throat> good condition. Wow, amazing. Um, okay, let's let's put it here. And then I also have mail from Italy, and um, the reason I've got mail from Italy is quite simple. The prices of these legendary creatures have been creeping up. So I've decided to also get some Italian versions of the legendary creatures that I don't yet have. I don't have a full collection, unfortunately. Like I'm missing two Elder Dragons, but I'm also missing some of the other uh, legendary creatures as well. And some of them have become so expensive. 
Okay, so here we go. I think I see something new. So we have this dude, whatever, whatever. Hey, there we go. And we've got something, whatever. This is nice. This is nice. Axelrod Gunnarsson in the house. And I believe I also ordered a second one, which is behind here. Again, beautiful condition. Just gonna put this away for now. Two red, two black, and four for this 5-5 five, five summon legend. Really kind of art that speaks to you, if you know what I mean. It looks like a giant and he's, he's doing something magical. And by the trees here, you can see it's enormous size. It's huge. It's a full moon, of course. And this one is red and black. So this one is only two colors. And then we have the other one. This one, actually, um, the English version is quite expensive. And that's one of the reasons why I decided to get the Italian version. I absolutely love the art of this card. I mean, look at it. Isn't that epic? Richard Kane Ferguson, of course. And that's kind of nice, by the way, about the Italian um, colors, because they are more vivid than the legendary colors. Uh, sorry, the legends colors. Here you can see the difference. And I, I like both. It's not that I prefer one or the other more. Um, I do like it when, if you play with, for example, Italian legends, that all your legends are Italian. <laughs> it's kind of an OCD thing, right? Um, the cool thing is, of course, this Italian is kind of hard for me to read. I think it's got First Strike, Ateco, that's uh, Attack, Improviso, so that's Strike, probably. So First Strike, Passa Tere Legendare. Tere is Land. Passa, I guess, is Passing Through, so it's got Legendary Land Walk. And this card, you look at this card, and you're like, okay, when you look at what the card does, it's not a very good card, right? Two, it's six mana for a 4-4. Four, four that has first strike and legendary land walk, right? I guess legend, legendary land walk can still be very powerful because a lot of players still play with legendary lands. I think Pendlehaven is quite popular right now. Uh, Urborg, Hammerheim, you know, there are some legendary lands out there uh, that are seeing a lot of play, so it could be useful. And I'm talking about old school here. Um, so yeah, but you wouldn't expect this card to be as expensive as it is. I don't know it by heart, but I remember Realizing I still needed this for my Legends collection and kind of looking up the price, I was like, oh man, really? It's that expensive? Really, dudes? Really? And yes, and so I decided to get the Italian one. Now, uh, the cool thing is, like I said, there is a strong connection between dungeon, Dungeons and Dragons and the set Legends, and especially these legendary creatures, because these legendary creatures were basically the first heroes of Magic the Gathering. The creators of the game um, wanted to make, and I'm just gonna show you some of my uh, legend cards in the meanwhile, uh, wanted to make a, um, a creature type that had more depth, so a creature type that was more than just a creature, creature with its own story, its own saga. And they decided to get inspiration from their Dungeon and Dragons campaigns. And the cool thing is um, that you can actually set these legendary creatures, um, you can you can lay them out like it's kind of a family tree. So maybe I can actually do that. Um, you have these uh, five dragons, right? These elder dragons. So I only have three, as you can see. I do have the other two, but they're chronicle edition. Um, and you know what? Let's let's take the the, the bad the badass, right? Nicol Bolas, right? The badass of the badass. As you can see, its core is black, and then it's connected to the allied colors, uh, red and blue. So if you would put this, and I'm just gonna, let me get this a little bit to the front to make it a little bit more clear. So you could say, okay, we've got Nicol Bolas. Then when you go through your legendary creatures, there are always three other creatures that share the same color symbols with, in this case, Nicol Bolas. So let's see if we can find them. So Johan, Sir Chandelar, Lord Magnus, Jasmine, Gabrielle. Hey, here we've got one, Gwendolyn. So Gwendolyn, as you can see, has the same uh, color in their cast in the casting cost as Nicobola. So this, you can you can kind of say this is the, uh, a general of Nicobola. Same thing can be said for Tetsuo Umezawa, right? So that is number two, and then here we go to number three, Soul Canard of Swamp King. So. That is, I am pretty impressed here by the army. Let me just get the camera that shows a little bit better. Oop. Here we go. So I am pretty impressed 
by the army of Nicol Bolas. Look at that. And then under these cards, you can actually put the cards that have a casting cost of red and black uh, or black and blue. So for example, this connects to that family tree. Uh, this connects to the family tree. And the interesting thing, of course, this color combination can also be played with Chromium, one of the other Elder Dragons, because Chromium also has black and blue in the casting cost. So Torvalki, and that, of course, is then goes on another pile. So here, and this one connects to another Elder Dragon. Let's see if I have that one. I'm not sure if I do. I don't think I have that one, but... You can see, for example, these two, they fit together, they form a set. So all these legendary creatures are connected together with the Elder Dragons, and you can kind of lay that out in a family tree. I don't know if you have these legendary creatures, it can be quite fun to do that. Um, you know, for example, here I've got another one. Um, this is Arcade Sabbath, and I can connect Arcade Sabbath with Rubinia Soulsinger. Right, And I know, because when I look at the example of Nico Bolas, I've got in total three of these creatures that have the same colors in their casting cost. So Rubinia is one of them, and there are two others. I don't believe I have the others. Um, and here, okay, let's have a look. Here we see Palladia Moors, right? The Elder Dragon, and that connects to Johan, and that connects to Jacques. Right, you see the same color combination. And like I said, in total, there are 55, so 50 legendary creatures and five uh, elder dragons. And maybe what I can do is kind of sort it in a way that it's a little bit more clear. Let's see, what I could do is make some space and I can show you how this family tree thing works, right? So you've got Nicol Bolas at the top, then you've got your three under commanders. And I guess you have these dudes and you have these dudes. So I'm just gonna pick it up. So this is kind of the way it looks, right? So at the top of your family tree, you've got your elder dragon. And then you've got the three creatures that share the same colors. And then you, you can go to the left where you see all the blue and blacks. And you can also go to the right where you see all the red and blacks, right? All the red and black creatures. So that's pretty nice. And of course, all the two color combinations can be played with two Elder Dragons. So basically they're linked to two Elder Dragons. Well, that's uh, <laughs> that's it. I'm sorry if it was uh, a little bit messy. Uh, I don't know, I just, I just wanted to share this with you because I, I kind of feel that um, a lot of people are now talking about this D&D set as if it's something new and I just wanted to to clarify that Dungeons and Dragons has always had a huge impact on the game and not just for the set legends, because you have to imagine in those days, if you were interested in Magic the Gathering, if you were probably in a development team of Magic the Gathering, that also meant that you were interested in the fantasy genre, that also probably meant that you were interested in RPG, right, in role-playing games. That meant that, that, that you were likely to also play Dungeons and Dragons. So of course, Dungeons and Dragons have had a huge impact starting from Alpha. I'm pretty sure there are cards in Alpha that are inspired by D&D campaigns. I just know it. And, you know, later on when Legends came, uh, you know, that made it even more clear with these link between Legends and Heroes and the D&D campaigns. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to put that out there, just share that with you. Like, okay, guys, it is not a new thing that's happening right now. And it's, it's probably one of the reasons why I think I like this uh, this new set just for, for drafting, I guess. Um, maybe, maybe, who knows? Anyway, um, this is my collection. I have, of the 55 cards, by the way, I wonder how many I still need. I need two Elder Dragons, definitely. Um, and I, and I, I just need some of the other cards. I think I have in total about 41 of the 55 legendary creatures. So that's not too bad. And as you can see, I'm allowing myself to get uh, the Italian version of the cards. Just because the English versions are so, so expensive at the moment. Some of them are. So that's why I'm also getting the Italians. Okay, this was it. This was the mail day for today. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the Legends uh, creature type. Uh, if you also have a legendary creature collection, maybe yours is already completely complete. I would love to hear from you. Let me know what your favorite legend 
from Legends is. Uh, I actually don't even know what my favorite Legends from Legends is. I guess I guess it's gonna be Tetsuo because I got this card, which makes it pretty special. And it's also a very powerful card and I really like the color combination. It opens a lot of doors. Um, anyway, thank you for watching. Um, if you wanna support what I do, if you wanna support the channel, uh, leave a like, there's my thumb. Leave a comment, uh, become a subscriber, click that button. Uh, and what else can you do? You can also support the channel financially um, so that I can buy some more of these uh, Italian legends. Let's see, oh, here's another one, Gabriel Angel Fire. Um, you can do that quite simply by clicking on the link that's appearing right now. That will take you to the Timmy Talks Patreon website and there you can become a patron. It already starts with $1 a month. So that's not much, is it? I don't think it is. I think it's reasonable. The cool thing is if you join the uh, Patreon program, your name will be mentioned in the end scroll, right? That's pretty cool. And um, what else? Oh yes, and you get access to our Discord. And on top of that, you can join the Timmy Talks tournaments and other events. So every, every other month or so, I organize something on the channel and for the channel members and patrons to thank them for their support. And when you join Timmy Talks on Patreon, you can actually join that fun so you can join into that, to those tournaments. So if you like to build Timmy decks, play with Timmy decks, and actually win a couple of matches, man, maybe you should join the Timmy Talks Patreon. Anyway, thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic, and see you next time. Ik het als fikker te samba kazee.